Hello everyone, we are back to talk uh, a little bit about image interpolation and using autoencoders. Um, this is a very interesting uh, example of deep learning because we are going to be exploring um, how we can generate um, new images and how we can transform uh, our image based on a latent, a latent space. Okay, so um, we we are gonna uh, start to talk a little bit about what is autoencoder uh, because that it's the uh, it's the main architecture that we're gonna we are gonna be using for this uh, lesson and uh, uh, autoencoder is one unsupervised artificial neural net network that uh, that attempts to to encode the data by compressing it into lower dimension. What that means? Um, so we we have our architecture, this is our architecture, and our architecture will be compounded by two other models, right? So it will be a model that will be called encoder and another model that will be decoder. And our encoder, what it does is just take an image as an input and uh, do some transformation, some convolution and other uh, things. And in the end, generate a latent a space, right? And then we're gonna get this latent space to give as an input to our decoder. And our decoder will be able to generate the same image that was inputted before, but uh, from the uh, latent space instead of the original image. So, um, and you're gonna see why we do, do that. One other thing that we'll be using that could be used it is to uh, compress um, data uh, before sending to through the network, for example. So this is way it's much more uh, smaller than the the real image, and still um, this uh, the code will be able to generate the final image uh, from a much smaller uh, let's say data. Okay, so let's look a little bit uh, what we have here in our uh, in our notebook. Um, we define some uh, parameters, which is uh, our settings. So you already saw all those, right? So number of classes, because you have, um, we are going to use the same uh, uh, data set that you used in the previous lesson, which is numbers, and you have ten. And here we're going to use a little bit more of epochs. Um, the training takes a bit longer, so you need, uh, in order to get some result, we need more uh, epochs and iterations. So we set here to fifty. Um, byte size uh, didn't change, the same, the learning the same um, and here just said that uh, 65 uh, is the size of the images and you're going to be on a flag to see to say if you're going to use the uh, GPU or not um, and then here it is how we download the data set so not much secret here, just run this and you'll be downloading um, our data set and here start our encoder, right? and as I said our encoder uh, consists of encoder and decoder uh, models. So we define here our two models, which one will be the encoder. And you can see here the encoder there, what is part of this, uh, this architecture. It is two layer of convolutional uh, layer that we have talked already. Um, notice that here we have only one channel because our image is not um, a three uh, color or a color full image and you're gonna have the the size of the image as output and the, on the second layer will be the size of the image and will be the, the uh, double the size as output and some difference that uh, from what we have seen it is that now we are using a kernel of size 4 and the stride here we are using the stride of 2 which means um, by applying this this layer we are going to be reducing the size of our original image because we are stepping uh, two by two um, uh, pixels, right? So, and then by, by doing so, you'll be reducing the size. It's, it's another way to reduce, uh, instant, like uh, one option to, it, it is very similar to what we had before, the pooling, max pooling, but this time we are doing here as part of the same uh, layer. So just skipping some, some pixels in the in the process of um, transform the image okay so here we were uh, then be the output for the thing and the next layer will be reducing by half be seven by seven 
okay and then we will just do uh, our uh, fully uh, connected layer that we already saw and um, here we you are defining the output of the image and it will be basically the, the size that that it's here, it will be here uh, times the original size of the image uh, times two, right? It's basically what you have seen in the previous uh, layer here, and uh, and then the output will be the, the number of classes. Um, then you're gonna do the forward as you already saw, right? And the output of this image will be uh, basically uh, our latent uh, space, okay? And then you have our decode, which is responsible for reconstructing the image uh, from our latent space. Basically, whatever is going to be coming out from this, it would be using that as an input and trying to build our uh, original image. So, for example, uh, we are here, we'll be doing everything on the opposite way. So, we started fully connected. So, we finished as a fully connected here and we start as a fully connect and then we apply the convolutional uh, backwards right so first from uh, twice the size and then the size of the the image itself and every and we end up with one here which was the the one that we started here okay and it's exactly the same but in the opposite uh, direction right? and then we have out encode which is our final model which will be containing the encode and the coder and the forward thing will be just basically the uh, encoder uh, that will be our latent space generate our latent space would be passed to our decoder as input and then we will have our final image all right so we i i have here running the still running our uh training so it will take uh, quite long. So it's still uh, 19 and you're going to go until uh, 30. Uh, but let's just have a look how it is the process of training uh, for this architecture. And it's very, um, it, it's a bit different of what we see. Uh, if you remember the phases when you are working with deep learning, there is basically divided into phase, right? So uh, three phases, let's say. One is the, the data. Uh, collection manipulation and then our architecture which we just saw and then we have to come up with a, a way to measure the loss uh, of our of uh, the output of our model and in our case here how we do that it is comparing we uh, before we were always looking at the uh, label and comparing the output uh, of the image of the output of the uh, the output of the so the image would be the input and the output would be the label for that image you know in this case here we don't need labels uh, we actually compare the output of the image with the original image okay so uh, we give the image here and then you get the output and um, we take the output and compare with the original one and see how far we are from the uh, from the original image and that's how we train our how we uh, basically train right so and then we do this the backup propagation to already know and uh, we keep improving that in this case here i'm saving um the output of the of our training in every uh iteration iteration um yeah this is a, a more option because we um we are gonna be using uh, we are gonna have um more lesson based on this uh, model and i'm saving that to use in the in the next um in the next uh, lesson in another notebook so i uh, taking the, the chance here to save whatever you are generating okay um then um i will pause the video a little bit and wait this to finish and uh, because i think we need to look at the the results before we continue Our trainer, uh, our training just finished, and you can look at the results. So, and you can see that our model is performing well. The training, so it was improving until the end. And um, we are gonna look at some um, the, uh, the results. Uh, I think the worth to go to see what is going on here. So that's the image that we gives um, in the input. 
and that's the image that is being generated uh, based on the input plus uh, latent space right so you can see that it's not the same exactly but it's very uh, much uh, similar so um, our model it's able to generate uh, the image based on on the on the latent space so pretty pretty well you can see here then um, the, the, you can see that it's uh, even removed some uh, inconsistence as well so you can see some cases even nicer uh, reconstructing even nicer than the original um, now let's see some more nice stuff that what it's where you wanted to look uh, closer so since we have the latent space we can do some transformation to our images right so for example we have a, a, a here an example of two chairs and you can see that we move from one chair to another type of chair um, nicely, right? So, and you are gonna do the same with our digits. Here, um, we do the interpolation. Uh, ex let's go to the example, then we'll, we'll go back a little to the code. So we take um, two image. We take the one and you take the seven, uh, similar to what you had on, on, the, on the chair example. So and then we go changing uh, the values and going doing the, the interpolation from one to seven uh, slowly and, and being very smoothly. And pretty nice. And this is a little bit uh, the technique that's used, for example, for change from two person that we see, or we can transform, if you find the right um, uh, latent space we can change from men to to uh, women for example and um, let's look a little bit how we did that so we create a interpolation function and it basically we are taking two uh, two images right so and you are doing the encode uh, using the model encode to uh, encoder to encode our uh, image into a lat latent space and we also do the same to the second image then you have two latent space and uh, from there we can do some calculation to transform uh, the two image uh, based on a lambda uh, space okay and uh, where this lambda came from uh, so basically then you do the transformation we have now a new uh, latent space not the not the image one or image two you have another one that was transformed and then we apply the encoder to encode uh, into an image uh, from a latent space okay then from there we have our image and uh, let's see what is that lambda the lambda here it is uh, it's just a range from 0 to 1 in 10 step so basically the 10 step here is the 10 uh, version that you have here if you want a more version if you want to not uh, and um, go even smoothly smoothly we can put more step here so we just choose 10 as an example and this is just a display and then we just go and go and uh, navigate through each um uh, let's say lambda uh, position and just do the calculation that you saw before just to change this uh this uh, let's say space lambda space and uh, it's pretty simple right so um, this calculation here it is uh, something that the, the research researchers have come with and you just use it you don't need to know much of what it's uh, uh, what's behind here because uh, very little people will know that what's really behind that and it's pretty nice and uh, another thing that you can do it is to generate that uh, latent space from random data as well right so here we are just basically using uh, two other uh, images and do some calculation and getting a new latent space but that latent space you can be transformed in different ways right uh, another way it is to apply some calculation and uh, come with totally random uh, version of the latent space and you're gonna see here for example um we're gonna get one image uh, and encode it get a latent space there 
and but you're not going to use this latent space you're going to just trying to get the uh, the mean and the standard deviation that it's on that latent space because latent space i think we have here uh, a little bit of this description uh latent space it is typically 100 dimensional hyper uh, sphere with each variable drawn from a gaussian distribution so this space comes with the uh, come from this um algorithm the gaussian distribution later we are going to use the more uh, this uh, this um, algorithm to calculate the distance between two images uh, will be another example that you're going to see later and then you usually use zero uh, as the mean and the standard deviation usually to one right and but uh, we that can change so then we just calculate it uh, based on one example that we we are doing here and just calculate this two thing and then we create random data right and based on, on the size of the uh, uh, latent space which is two dimensional array so just take the position uh, the x and the y of the latent space and apply the standard deviation and the mean and just will make the new latent space being the same uh, distribution of the one that our model it is able to decode okay so we generate something totally random here just following the standard deviation the mean that it, it, it's our model knows and use this totally random data and try to make our encode to encode into something that we hope to be a number but uh will depend of um, the model to generate uh, what it's come from out from the your latent and in our example here when you try to generate different uh images we can see that it generates very totally new numbers and sometimes the number is not really a number like for example this one here um it is able to generate something it's almost it's a seven or it's a zero and here is totally nothing and um, so basically what we're doing here we are generating random the latent space which will hope our model to gen to be encoding that into something meaningful in something that the the decoder was uh, trained on in our case here image but if you uh, if you have seen an example of the uh, random uh, total generated faces for example would use the same approach but then but because the decoder would be uh, trained on faces you'd be to generate a uh, totally new faces for example or, or, or something similar for but uh, here we are generating totally uh, new um, images only based on what our model knows and uh, just an example here how we generated our random data it is uh, that's the the kind of data that we generate and you can see there is two dimensional array and um, basically that and i hope you guys have enjoyed this look at the this uh, magic that you can uh, achieve just uh, using out in code and play with uh, this latent uh, this latent space that it's coming from our, our our model and the possibilities that it's open up with this uh, architecture uh, thank you very much see you on next lecture